Hello and welcome back to my channel. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. My name is Muriel and, well, the month of January is a bit poor in terms of review videos because I'm in the middle of rereading A Song of Ice and Fire, I'm also reading a few other books but I'm also busy working on drawing so there won't really be any reviews for the month of January but I still wanted to make a video and so I found the anything but books tag. So I'm gonna do that. So question one, name a cartoon that you love. So I don't really watch cartoons anymore as an adult but I enjoyed quite a few cartoons as a child. I think the most important one in my life was undoubtedly Pokemon. I was a huge, huge Pokemon fan because magical creatures that can do cool stuff with water, electricity, fire, etc. But I mean, I was addicted to the Cartoon Network channel, so I watched a lot of things. I usually enjoyed the weirder cartoons and the ones that were somewhat based on folklore or mythology or supernatural stuff, so I liked the Jumanji cartoon and the Godzilla cartoon. That was one of my favorites because of all the big giant monster creature things. <laughs> I liked one that was very, very weird. It was called Courage the Cowardly Dog. And what's funny about that one is that the grandmother figure, who is the owner of the dog, bears my name, Muriel, which I've basically never seen elsewhere in a cartoon or even in movies, it's actually pretty rare. My, my name isn't at all popular in people my age. In English, definitely a little more in French, but most people who have my name in French are like in their 40s and 50s, so that was cool. Recently though, I did, well I mean recently, like a couple of years ago, I watched out of curiosity Avatar The Last Airbender and then Avatar The Legend of Korra and that was actually very good, so I enjoyed those, but in general now I'm not really into cartoons anymore, not even like the movies, you know, the DreamWorks pictures or the Pixar movies, though I've enjoyed a few of those as well. Question two, what is your favorite song right now? This is a bit of a complex question for me, actually, because I have a weird relationship to music. By that, I mean, I mostly listen to movie soundtrack pieces on loops, or like I have a, not even a few, like a couple of singing artists that I like, but I'll binge listen to them every three months. I listen to the radio in the car with my mother, and most of that is classic pop rock, which I enjoy. I know a lot of music because I have older parents. I'm familiar with a lot of the music they listen to, so music from the 60s, 70s, and then I also have slash had older friends, so I'm also familiar with music from the 80s. On my own though, I don't really listen to much like radio music songs. I am a huge Florence and the Machine fan, and I'll binge listen Florence's albums from time to time. I used to be a huge fan of Coldplay. I, I'd say I'm still a fan of like the early Coldplay. I basically cut it off at the album Viva La Vida in Prospect Marsh. I really like Keen as well, but again, especially like the first two albums, especially uh, under the INC. So apart from that though, these days I listen to piano arrangements for movie soundtrack. That's my thing. But that's also because I play the piano, so I play what I listen to. It feeds into itself in a way. But I'm gonna still try to answer the question. So if I have to pick a song, like really a song, I'll go with Witch Witch by Florence and the Machine. It's like a demo song on the album How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful. I think it's a great, great song. It doesn't even sound like a demo to me, so sometimes I'll blast that in my ears from time to time. Otherwise, the song I've been listening to a lot, but that's because I'm learning to play it on the piano, is the Davy Jones theme from Pirates of the Caribbean 2, composed by the great Hans Zimmer. I know it's it's weirdly specific. I don't even remember the movie that much. I saw it, but it didn't leave me with that great of an impression. But then I heard this piano arrangement for that theme by an awesome musician who has a YouTube channel, and I'll link it in the description. He's called Patrick Peachman. I've already learned a couple of his piano arrangements for like 
Game of Thrones music. His stuff is amazing though. It is for like, I would say, at least intermediate level. I would not recommend you try it if you play the piano and you're at a beginner level. I mean, that stuff will be a bit too advanced for you, I think. They are pretty elaborate and beautiful pieces, but you need to have a modicum of uh, piano playing experience to even attempt them, I think. So yeah, I'm learning that one. I'm three quarters through. I'm very proud of myself for that. I have like one sheet music page left. I've also really gotten into his arrangement for like one of the main themes from the Interstellar movie. I didn't like the movie at all, but that piano arrangement is beautiful. And just recently, like a couple of days ago, he uploaded his version of Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. I haven't even watched the TV show, but that piece was great, so I'll probably be listening to it a lot in the coming days. Question three, what could you do for hours that isn't reading? Sleeping? <laughs> Well, I like watching the birds in my garden. I can be absolutely fascinated by even just pigeons, wood pigeons, even rock pigeons that land on my terrace to feast on the peanuts I leave for them and the other garden birds. In fact, I'm such a bird nerd, I'll drop whatever I'm doing if I see a new bird I've never seen before. Like, if there's a green woodpecker, the other day there was one on the grass, I was like, ooh, there's a green woodpecker. I ran to the window, took out my binoculars and looked at it. Obviously, playing the piano, I can't really do it for like, hours because I live in an apartment building and that doesn't really work out with the neighbors, though I will invest in a digital piano to allow me to play with headphones on so I can play more than my current hour to an hour and a half a day, which isn't quite enough for my taste. I've mentioned before I have not the greatest mental health, so if I'm not feeling well, I won't be doing much of anything. Conversely, if I'm feeling better, I can do something for hours, non-stop. I can really get hyper-focused onto something. Recently, I've gotten back into drawing because I have to finish some drawings for my art class. And I can just sit at my desk, put the audiobook on, and work on my drawings for like three, four hours straight. When it gets really bad, I can do that and forget about eating or going to bed at a reasonable hour. So yeah, I have weird activity patterns overall, but yeah, it's all about being in the zone. Question four. What is something you love to do that your followers would be surprised by? Honestly, I'm not sure my followers know me well enough as a person to be surprised or shocked by something I do. But I make excellent chocolate chip cookies, I don't know if that counts. I have a great recipe and everyone in my family love my cookies and say I make excellent chocolate chip cookies. So there's that. I hate cooking. I do the bare minimum to feed myself correctly, but I'm a good baker. I don't really bake for myself, I bake for my family. But I'm pretty good at it. Uh, another thing is I actually like tidying. I'm a bit of a neatness freak, I suppose. For example, my books there, I'm the kind of weirdo that takes out a ruler and makes sure all of the book spines are aligned to the millimeter. I also like to declutter, so once or twice a year I'll go through the stuff I have and just get rid of whatever I'm not using. It's gotten rarer over the years because I'm really getting pretty good at keeping the essential, the stuff that has emotional value, the stuff I'm actually using, so I don't really have much stuff to get rid of anymore, so that's good, but I enjoy doing that. I feel very clean afterwards. It's a good feeling. And finally, I'm not really a gamer, but I do play some video games from time to time. Again, I have a binge attitude towards video games. I can be like hardcore into a new video game and play it 10 hours a day for like a month, and then I'll drop it for a year. I went through a massive uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild phase back in September or something, but it really helped me to go through that bad thing that happened to me last summer. I have this video game I loved as a kid. I really seldom play because it's very difficult for me to play it on my MacBook. It's something called Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the three specifically. It's an old, like, turn-based strategy fantasy game. I loved it as a kid and I still have fondness for it because there's a crap ton of mythological creatures in it. Any mythological creature you could think of is in this game. They're like your armies. Your armies are creatures or dragons, manticles, cyclops, 
elves, minotaurs, fairies, unicorns, centaurs, everything. It's an amazing game, like, again, a crap ton of campaigns and stuff, but I play it rarely these days. Sadly, I play The Sims a little bit. The Sims 3 and The Sims 4. I prefer The Sims 3 overall. I think it's a better game. I have like an old copy of Silent Hill 2 that I bought a long time ago with a friend because he was really into horror stuff. I educated myself a lot on horror movies and horror video games, but I haven't watched or played that many of them. I've just played Silent Hill 2 and it's absolutely terrifying and I've never picked it back up and it kind of has sentimental value, ironically, because it's associated to this old friend I had. I was a ginormous fan of Spyro the Dragon as a kid. Those games have a very special place in my heart because you get to play a little dragon. <laughs> One of the best games I've ever played on PS2. I still have my PS2. I'm very, very attached to it. I'm never getting rid of it. I know there's a PS4 now. I've never played the 3 or the 4. I still have my PS2. I'm never getting rid of it. It's the game Okami because, again, based on Japanese folklore mythology and that game is just magnificent. Visually, artistically, it's beautiful and it's a very immersive game and has a good uh, lifespan and lots of things to do in it. So there you have it. Question five, what is your favorite unnecessarily specific thing to learn about? I've taken deep dives into weird little information rabbit holes many, many times over the years. I'll just get into a topic and intensely invest it for a while and then move on to something else. I mean, there are major topics I've been interested in for years and continue to be interested in, so I'm not talking about those, but like, Little weird things, like the question asks. So I'll go perhaps with like horror movie plots. Like I said, I haven't watched that many horror movies because the really good ones really mess my head up. And I have very vivid dreams. I've always had very vivid dreams or nightmares, so I'd rather not mess with that. But I've read a lot of horror movie synopsis. I'll go like on Google, like top 10 most scary movies or top 10 most disturbing movies. You'd be surprised the different results you get whether or not you use the word scary or disturbing. I'll see, you know, the movie title and then go on Wikipedia or IMDb or something and just read the plot so I know what it's about. Also, this old friend I had in childhood was really into horror movies and he just told me the plots of a lot of them. So I have actually decent horror movie knowledge. So yeah. And then even more specific than that, I really got into the alien verse for a little while because I saw the movie Prometheus in the movies. I really liked it. And then I went to see Alien Covenant, which I liked. I've never actually seen the original Alien movies, but I wanted to know more about the background story and the universe law and the biology of the xenomorphs. Went on specialized wikis and then got really interested in the parasitic life cycle of the xenomorph. Because that's this thing I've just accumulated a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things. Specialized knowledge or like in-depth knowledge but also very superficial knowledge of different little things and, and trivia and then you know general knowledge and my mum will be like how how do you know all these little things? Well I, well, I read about them in actual books or like on the internet. I waste a lot of time doing that but knowledge is always a good thing right? Even if it's about silly things like the xenomorphs. Question six. What is something unusual that you know how to do? I'm not quite sure. I can speak both French and English fluently. I don't think it's that unusual. Although it's not that common either, where I live at least. You can play the piano, but that's not that unusual either. Lots of people play musical instruments. Drawing is the same. I mean, I know how to identify a lot of <laughs> birds and plants on site, but again, is it that unusual? I don't know. I started learning High Valyrian because I'm that big of a Song of Ice and Fire nerd on Duolingo, and I I've gotten pretty good with it, but then I dropped it because I wasn't doing so well. I would like to pick it back up. So I have learned a few phrases and the actual grammar, you know, that, that's behind it. So I actually understood how the language worked a bit. So here goes. Zaldrizes buzdari ipsos dao. And yes, that's actually a phrase you'll find in the books. Or maybe not in the books, because there's not that much high learning in the books, but in the TV series. And if you know what it means, good for you. Question seven. Name something you made in the last year and show us if you can. Can't really name them because, well, I haven't, but I've made drawings in the past year and yeah, sure, I can show a few of them. So here goes.
Question eight, what is your most recent personal project? Well, like I already mentioned, I'm currently learning to play the Davy Jones theme from Pirates of the Caribbean 2, composed by Hans Zimmer, on the piano. The arrangement was made by Patrick Peachman, like I said. After that, I will probably tackle the main theme from Schindler's List, which is not a movie I've actually seen. I just heard that arrangement, once again by Patrick Peachman, on YouTube and I was like, this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> of course it bloody is, because it's John Williams who composed it. Another personal project, I mean, can you even call that? I'm kind of reorganizing my uh, Sims 4 save files. I even made one uh, with all like the Song of Ice and Fire houses and stuff, and then I have one with lots of fantasy creatures, aliens, vampires. If you're not familiar with the game, that won't mean anything to you. If you are, you'll know what I'm talking about. And, well, just finishing a few drawings I still have from last year. That's the main actual personal project. I really need to get those done. Because, so, I just showed you a few drawings. I colour some of them. Some of them I leave in black and white, just simple pencil work. Some of them I colour with mostly alcohol-based markers. I use pro markers. But I'm trying to get into like colored pencil work as well. I dabble a teensy bit with like watercolors, but I'm really not proficient in that at all. I like to learn more though. Question nine. Tell us something you think about often. Everything. <laughs> I think about a lot of things a lot of the time. I don't, wouldn't even know where to start with this question. Unfortunately, I think about a lot of very negative things because, hello, anxiety. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. I think about the world in change, about climate change, about social injustices, about sexism. But then I also think about more personal matters, uh, my own future, which is a constant source of anxiety, uh, my relationships, my family. But uh, then I will still think about more positive things. I don't know, birds I see, bugs, the books I read. Of course, yeah, I mean, I think a lot about the books I read, about the fandoms I'm a part of, so Song of Ice and Fire stuff, we you know, TV shows I watch, or personal projects, just, you know, my imagination going wild, or my, my brain just going weird places, it does that a lot, you know, I don't know, thinking about also spiritual stuff, I knew that from time to time, about the universe, death, I mean, thinking about death can actually both be negative and positive with me, that's just how it works, thinking about the past, about how, where I Currently sit, there was once nothing but forests going on for kilometers and kilometers. That's something I think about often. Yeah, no, I, I think about a lot of stuff, a lot of the time. I have a hyperactive brain in that regard. Question 10. Give us something that is your favorite. I'm gonna go with food. I love fried eggs. <laughs> I love eggs in general. I'm a big egg fan. I love my Sunday bowl of cereal for breakfast. It's like my uh, comfort food. But I could go for something a little more highbrow, I suppose. Art-wise, I love uh, pre-Raphaelite paintings, especially like the second wave of pre-Raphaelite. So people like Dante Gabriel Rossetti and his magnificent redheads. I'm a big Art Nouveau fan. Like, Mucha's work just makes my heart sing. <laughs> a great source of inspiration as well. And then favourites, you know what, in the animal kingdom. My favourite birds are the members of the Corvidae family. So ravens, crows, magpies, jays, etc. They're my favourite. A lot of people don't like crows or magpies. They think they're dirty birds or birds of ill omen because they eat other birds' chicks and they're dark and they make according to them, ugly sounds. But I'm like, have you ever actually really listened to Magpie? Magpie makes a lot of different sounds, and I love hearing them <laughs> in my garden or on my terrace. I immediately know if there's a magpie on my terrace. I love watching them. They're like, to me, when I see the family of magpies that lives in my garden, I just see small, flighted black and white velociraptors, and that makes me very happy. And then after that come the parrots and then the owls. Huge fondness for owls, but uh, yeah, ravens, crows, magpies, and all the parrots are my definite favourites. Among mammals, I love foxes. I like bears as well, but that's probably because I have a, a teddy bear I've had since I was two years old, so. <laughs> but foxes, no. And snow leopards. And maybe clouded leopards as well. They're really beautiful animals. And then 
for flowers. I love columbine flowers, violets, but that's mostly because of their perfume. Foxglove, a lot of wildflowers. I don't actually like cultivated flowers, so forget roses. To me, they're too, they're too perfect. Like they're too unnatural in a way. So I don't like roses at all. I like wildflowers. Question 11. Say the first thing that pops into your head. Parthenogenesis. <laughs> and that's it. Got through all the questions. So now you know a bit more about me outside of my passion for books and speculative fiction in particular. Like I said, the month of January will be a bit of an empty month, but at the end of it, there will obviously be a monthly wrap-up video, maybe a book review, I don't know yet, and then it'll pick back up and I mean, get back to normal in a way in February, where I have uh, an intense uh, reading schedule planned. In the meantime, I hope you all have a lovely day or evening, and I hope the beginning of the year is treating you well overall, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye!